praise be the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the designing. He reveals he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Lord Jesus Christ, I trust God that you are saved and uh, you are gliding on the graces of God and the Lord is taking you to a higher level in the strong mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I invite you to this program, I want to encourage you that the Lord is doing something in your life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we bless and honor your holy name. We invite your Holy Spirit as we gather with this believer of yours to sharing your word. We ask that you may give us understanding. And me as your servant give me a talents to reveal mysteries that shall go far in changing and transforming the dirty patterns of your disciple in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. That word we have just opened our prayers with is in the book of Daniel chapter number two and verse twenty. It was when Daniel with his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego asked God a question. They asked God about a mystery that no one in the whole of Babylonian kingdom or empire was able to get. And you ask me why that prayer. In verse 20 he says, <laughs> He reveals deep and hidden things. He reveals deep and hidden things. Today, I want us to discuss a word called Power of inquiring of God. Power when you ask God a question. When Daniel and his friends shared the commission in Abednego were asking God the question about the dream the king had but had forgotten. And because of that, the king had issued a death sentence to all the wise men of his kingdom, of whom Daniel was one of them. So meaning they were being faced by a, by, 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 by a, a problem or by a disastrous danger that no one could avoid it unless they were able to tell the king what he had in his dreams. And because he had forgot the dream, he could not the king could not be able to tell the dream to seek an interpretation like in the case of Pharaoh 
and Joseph. No, here it was different. The dream was totally forgotten. But the king is disturbed. And he put it that whoever shall tell me what I dreamt and interpret the dream, this honor shall be accorded him. But the failure to do so, there is inescapable. And there are many of us today who are being faced by death every situations and circumstances that unless you know what is ailing you you are good as dead unless you know what is the secret to what you are going to do it is more the same to say you are dead and today i want to bring you a message called inquiring of god asking god to reveal a matter that is too wonderful for you. That is what he says through his prophet, that I, the Lord, does nothing without revealing the matter to his servant, the prophet. And today you are his prophet. I am his prophet. And I want to teach you some of the things that will, 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 will shorten yeah? will shorten your process. Look at the children of Israel. They went around the wilderness for 40 years. But the Bible says there was a shorter part of the land of Canaan. But because they didn't know how to fight, the Lord saw that they will face the Philistines on the way and they will be defeated. And because of that, they will choose to go back to Egypt. And the vision of God will clash there in between. That is why I want us to discuss this message together. And I ask you this question. How many times have you ever asked God question? Why me? Why am I going through this? What is the secret to my problems? Why are my problems like an ending? Why did that happen to me the way it did? Because today I want to teach you three things about the inquiring of God. Yes, inquiring of God. I want to teach you number one, tools of inquiring of God. Tools of inquiring of God. And number two, power of inquiring of God. And number three, what are obstacles or hindrances of inquiring of God. So I would like you to follow this sermon to the end. Because I might not be able to split it in, as part one and part two. But I would like you to follow it closely and you will be able to understand there are things, there are things if we would have Know them, we would not be where we are. We would not have gone through what we went through. We would not have faced that battle that left us with the injuries if we had known the truth. That is what the Lord says. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And who is the truth? Truth. That is why I'm saying that the God is a revealer of mysteries. God is a revealer of mysteries. Is there a mystery in your life that no one has ever been able to solve? No one has ever been able to understand. In Daniel chapter number two, and verse forty-six. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and order that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely, look at this. This is what people are going to say after this sermon. Surely, your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery. You could be having, you could be in a situation, circumstance, or a problem that you have tried to sort it out. You have tried to solve the problem, but all your efforts have turned out to be ineffective. It has turned 
turned out to be just in the wind. You try this, you try this, you are given this for me, you are given it to me. Nothing is working. You ask yourself, what is this? I don't understand. I tried bishop so and so. I tried reverend so and so. I tried pastor, prophet, advice. You have tried almost everything in sorting that the single problem, but you do not understand why for years it has remained the same. If not the same, worse than it were before you made, you made a trial of sorting it out. Are you in the form of a quagmire? Are you asking you a quick, are you asking yourself questions without the answer? Have you tried to go to each and every place to look for answers concerning yourself, but you have never found anybody who can be concretely and conclusively tell you this is a problem? Today I want to teach you that there is one and only one who knows all things and he is willing to make it known to you. He is willing to reveal a mystery to you. Where to, when to, long, he knows. Who did what, he knows. Why are things not working, he knows. He is coming to reveal a secret that if you did know it today my friend if you did know it today tomorrow you will wake up to implement it lord why does my church not receive a break and he will tell you why why is my family not being blessed he has a, he has a ability to tell you hey, why lord is my husband the way he is the lord knows why is my wife not changing the lord knows why are my children the way they are the lord knows why is my health the way it is the lord knows he is willing but here the lord awaits wait for somebody to ask him a question yes the lord is waiting you to come to inquire of him in each and every institution of any kind of any form even in the churches there is always a designated praise called the praise of inquiry before you start and engaging yourself with that institution you first visit that office you ask your question there they ask you the question there from there they guide you in the best way according to your need the same case is with our God unless you ask God a question and a question in the way it is supposed to be asked you might stay in the wilderness the rest of your life you might remain in the forest not knowing when you will come out of that forest you might perish in the waters because the storm has overwhelmed you, you hey, wherever you are you might die in the fire and not find anyone to save you in the fire you might find yourself in the lion of dance and not see anyone there to come to, to, to cross the mouth of those lions and you are devoured but if you be knowing the truth you will be courageous you will be bored you will be esteemed you will be activated to face it and you shall be facing it with the knowledge with the understanding with the revelation with the assurance with the certainty that this is the way it is going to turn out to be I want you to come out of that crowd called confusion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, why any choir of God? People have asked God many questions. People have been going to prayer mountains. People are praying and fasting. People are going to prophets. People are going to all people who say, I see, I see. But at the end of the day, nothing you come out of those places knowing, nothing you understand, you don't discern, and at the end of the day, you are left in despair. You are left 
anxious. You are left in the fear. You are left discouraged, frustrated. You are left rust. You are left wedding. You have now become a vagabond. You are now a novel. You do not know what to do. And you are saying now, where well, I have come now to this far, only God knows. But have you taken an initiative to ask him, Lord, what is the matter about me? What is the matter about me? And I will refer to you to several verses that you shall use to stand doing before the Lord to inquire of Him. But before I give you the power, because there is power in the inquiring of God. Actually, this is where everything is hidden because the Lord is the one who knows all things. That is why Jesus says, You shall know the truth and truth will set free. And that's why Daniel have said, You are a revealer, you are a revealer of mysteries. And Nebuchadnezzar has said, He has he is a revealer of mysteries because He has revealed this mystery to you. Yes, there are people in your family who shall come and tell you that your God is a revealer of mysteries if this has been made known to you. This is the top secret of our families. But it has been made known to you. That can only be your God. There are people who come to tell you. These, you have known the secret of doing business. These can only be revealed to you by God. People who come and tell you, you have known the secret of to the ministry success. These revelations are only given by God. They are things that you are going to learn. You are going to know. If you shall take an initiative to contact God, to question God, to ask God, to petition God, to inquire of God, and He shall tell you without misguiding you, misinstructing you, or even misdirecting you. He shall tell you the absolute truth in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it in 2 Samuel chapter number 21. 2 Samuel chapter number 21. During the line of David, there was a famine for three successful years. So David sought the face of the Lord. The Lord said, it is on account of so and his blood is stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. Look here. This is David who is like you enemy. You are going through a problem year after year. But you don't understand why this problem does not end. It does not have a conclusion. It does not have an ending. David was in the same situation. And he sought the face of God. Mm. I want to encourage you. Do not give up. Seek the face of God by asking him a question. Because the Lord is willing to respond. And the Lord answered him. It is because there is an innocent brother that is crying against the Lord. So meaning, when we inquire of the Lord, we are able to get deep most secret about ourselves, about our problems, about our undertakings. Nobody could have voted. Deep your night. There were those people who tricked Joshua, but Saul killed them in his zeal for God. But that brother was innocent because there was a lasting covenant between Joshua and Gibeonite that they will be saved. They will not be annihilated. But here the man Saul comes to revoke and cancel that covenant that was done while the Lord supervised it. And the Lord told David, unless that brand is avenged, the famine will continue for another year, another year, another year. There are secret, 
if we are going to know them, shall be the end of our struggles, shall be the end of our humiliations, shall be the end of our shame, shall be the end of disgrace, shall be the end of that unending struggle. Oh, you need that truth, but the only one who knows that truth, it is not me, Apostle Joel Hapani. It is not you. Mm. It is God himself. And that is so first of all, before I launch you into, into the power of inquiring of God, let me first of all teach you tools of inquiring God. Tools of inquiring of God. When you go there at that gate, they ask you, bring your identity card to identify you. They ask you several things. They scan you and all that. Even when inquiring of God, there are things that are instituted in the Bible by the Holy Spirit that we use them in inquiring of God. And when you miss when you miss them, you find you get either piecemeal informations, half-cooked information, or even at all at all you don't get any information. And you are left wondering, does it really call, is God interested with me? When will I get married? You don't know what stops you from getting married. When will I start my own family? When will I do something for myself? Remember even J Jacob, he was working for Laban. He didn't know why, why he was not doing something for himself until he had a dream in the night. Number one tool that you use in the inquiring of God, you can see it in the first summary chapter number 30 verse 7. It's called an effort. You use a method to inquire of the Lord. David told Abiada, that is after the Amalekites had invaded Zikrag and had plundered it. But the men were planning to stone him, but David gave strength himself. David gives God strength from the Lord is gone. But in an inquiring of God, David asked for a method from Abiada the priest. Know that. Do you have a method as a child of God? You ask me, man, but what is an effort? Today, the, the effort where, 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 they, they, they were prayer garments. They were prayer garments that were used when one is approaching God in the place of prayer. And it, today, it is what we call the garment of salvation. The garment of salvation is what I call the full armor of God. Look at Joshua. He was standing to an inquire of God in Joshua chapter number, Zechariah chapter number 3. With a few the garment. But when he wore the green garment and a new tambana, he was able to consult God and God responded. Understand that. What effort do you use in seeking God? Have you checked if you still have your spiritual garment? That is number one. Number two. You need a priest. And inquiring of God is done through a priest. In the Judges chapter number 18, verse 5 to 6, you will find there there was a revert. You can also find it in First Samuel chapter number 22 and verse 10. First Samuel 22, verse 10. You shall find it there. The man of God is saying, I have consulted God through this and through this and I have not. But if you look at the Judges chapter number 18 and verse 5, the Bible says, Judges chapter number 15, 18 verse 5 to 6, these Danites came and asked that Levite, who was a priest of Micah, to inquire of God about them. So you go to the priest to ask God a question about yourself. But you shall tell me, man of God, I have really gone to many. Hold on. I've told you number one, have an effort. When you go to the priest, be wearing an effort of an inquiry. Number two, go to the priest of God to ask God a question through him. Number three, what you need is a prophet of God. So these are two different things. A priest, God speaks to them. Uh, they use Urim and Udum. There is something a priest of God is given to them. And whatever they tell you, you find it is true. 
but the prophet sees what God is seeing. Look at it in First Kings chapter number 22 and verse 9. What does Joshua tell the king Ab? Is there a man of God in this place who we can inquire of God? Is there a prophet? Eh? And you will find it in Second Kings chapter number 3 verse 11. Yes, they said there was a Joram when he was when he was going to fight the Moabite by the help of Joshua. But he also asked the same question: Is there a prophet of God in his place in whom we can inquire of God? And in the case of Joram with the Joshua, they say they said Elisha the son of Shaphat used to pour water to Elijah, and Joshua said the word of the Lord is with him. Who is your prophet? And that is why today there are so many false prophets. Ah, Jesus need be a many spiritist to do what to, 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 to tell you that they can see and they can lead your star, they can lead your your plan, they can tell you who witched you, who source of you, and of all those things. But you need a clean, clear prophet of God. In the first Kings 22, verse 9, you shall see the king Jehoshaphat they said, No, 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 no. These prophets of US 450, I doubt they have the prophecy of God. Is there another prophet of the prophet of the Lord in this land? And I have said there is one called Micaiah, but he does not tell me he does not tell me anything that is favorable. But Jehoshaphat said, You should not say so. You are a king's son. Let, her, let him come and tell us what the Lord says. And Micaiah came and they inquired of him. And he gave them the truth. You inquire God through a prophet from God. Another thing that you used to, another tool used in inquiring of God is what we call an offering of inquiry, a sacrifice of inquiry. You can read it in First Samuel, chapter number nine, verse seven. The Bible says, uh, the, 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 "The servant of Saul told him, I hear there is a man of God in this place, and whatever he says comes to pass. Let us go to him and ask him to tell us the way we should take.' But Saul asked, 'What shall we give him? Seeing that the food and the water is used up." But the man of here said, Here I have a quarter of a shekel, a quarter of a shekel of a silver. Mm. So that is what we call a consultation of fee. When you are going to the man of God, and this is what the people you don't get, you confuse offering with consultation fee. It is good despite carrying an offering. Go with something, a sacrifice, a small token, and tell the man of God, I have come to offer this for God to give me a favorable answer. Another tool that is used in consulting God. You will find it also in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 3. Still in the 2 Kings chapter number 3. 2 Kings chapter number 3 what I call uh, praying the harp. Praying the harp. 2 Kings chapter number 3 and a verse 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 there. Let, let, let us read verse 15. But now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was praying, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and he said, This is what the Lord says. When you pray the harp to the Lord, when you make a worship and a worship of the heart, remember David was praying the harp and the demons would come out of the king. Harp praying has a divine secret in asking God a question. I remember one day I was praying the piano. I was praying the piano in our church. And I soaked in that worshiper and I heard the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And he told me the dimension our church was to take. And it is true, it took that dimension. He told me this church in a span of this time will close down. And after this time, the church will come back. And I prayed very much to stop the closing down. And it really closed down. As the Holy Spirit told me, where I was praying the harp. So he asked me for the harpist. That's another tool used in an acquiring of God. 
another two. You find it in Second Kings 22 and verse 18 to 19 is what we call responsive heart. Second Kings 22 verse 18 to 19 responsive heart there are people when they go to consult god their heart are not responding their hearts are not yielding they are hard they are weak they are stiff necked but when you have a responsive heart a broken contrite heart a yielding heart a willing heart that heart inside it there is a system put by god that asks god questions and god responds humility that king that is josiah you shall find that the, the prophet has said because you have an responsive heart and you humbled yourself to a point of inquiring of god so you do not go to inquire of god when you have pride or arrogance develop humility of god and one way we develop humility will come to teach you through fasting another tool you use in inquiring of god you find it in numbers 27 verse 21 it is called urim priest use something called urim it is an object Today it is put in the spirit of a priest. In the days of Aaron, it was a physical item. There was something called Urim and Dumim. But in Numbers 27, verse 21, Moses said that Joshua will be an equivalent of God through the priest who shall use an Urim. And Urim, I would say, it is a gift of discernment that is supplanted in a person that that discerns, that connects and agrees with what the Lord is saying. Another tool, another when you if these things you may not fail, you may fail to understand them. Look for me, come to the office, let us sit down and discuss them because most of the people are seeking God, but what they are lacking is a tools of seeking that God. Therefore, God does not respond to them because the tools used in seeking God are not the tools used in inquiring of God are not used. And you know, God is God of protocols. Judges 20 verse 26 Judges 20 and verse 26 and I'd like us to read that one because it is important to us. Judges 20 and verse 26. Then the Israelite all the people went up to Bethel and there they sat weeping before the Lord. It is enough of weeping, my friend. It is enough of weeping and waiting. It is enough of shedding tears. Let us go to the Lord and ask him what is the path. Look at the other part. They fasted that day until evening and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings to the Lord. After they done that, what did they do in verse 27? And the Israelites inquired of the Lord. And the Israelites inquired and inquired of the Lord. Verse 28 towards the, towards the end, the Bible says, verse 28 towards the end, the Bible says, the Lord responded. The Lord responded. Go, for tomorrow I will give them into your hands. This is these are tools of inquiring, of asking God a question, and God is speaks with certainty. You use prayer and fasting for they were weeping the whole day. They were praying. You use prayers. Number two, you fast. Even if it is one day. From morning until... This was a morning to evening fasting. They presented the burnt offerings and fellowship offering. That is why I told you, you need to make a consultation fee and also an offering. It's called a burnt offering of an acquiring of God and a fellowship offering of God partnering with your question. The other thing in, in 1 Samuel 28 verse 6, 1 Samuel 28 verse 6, you acquire God through dreams. Yes, when you're sleeping, tell the Lord, speak to me through a dream. 
Luke chapter 1, so says that the Lord does not speak to me. Either do, let us read first Samuel 28, verse 6. He says, Samuel then said to his attendants, No, 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 verse 6. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or urim or prophets. So the Lord he can inquire of the Lord through dreams, urim, and prophets. But there are times God does not answer. That is why I told you, I will teach you he balances for you and the query of God and the God refusing to answer you. And the God refuses to respond to your question. You get that? But dreams is a tool of an inquiring of God. Another tool I want you to highlight is what we call joint prayers. When you join your hands together and you pray, Acts chapter number 1 and verse 23 there, you shall see the church wanted a replacement of Judas as Iscariot, but they had Matthias and the other gentlemen. They did not know who to choose, so they asked God, who is the light person? What did they do? They prayed together. There were about 120 people and above. Joint prayer, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They made prayers together to ask God for her. For, uh, for, 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 for 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 his views so you need no, you need to look for a person to pray with to ask god we want god to teach us about this problem joint prayers prayers of fellowship are very important in asking god a question another tool of seeking or an inquiring of god is what we call a tent of meeting. In Exodus 3, verse 7, the Bible says Moses used to put a tent outside the camp. And anyone who wanted to inquire of the Lord would go there. Did you get that? A tent of meeting. This is what we call today a place of prayer. Prayer booth. The Lord Jesus said what? Enter into your prayer booth, lock the door behind you, and pray to your father who is in secret, and he will answer you in the public when you have a tent of meeting. A tent of meeting is a tool of inquiring of God. Where do you at which point do you make your prayers act? It is very important. We are not like religion, religion. we are not like the heathens who pray on the mountains, who pray under the trees, who pray on the lot, who pray just anywhere. Our road has designations. There are people even who have developed things they call prayer rooms. Prayer rooms. They have in their houses, they have built a small room where they enter and they close everything. They, they, they attentively stay there with God and there they can ask God and God responds so easily. Do you have a tent of meeting? A praise that you have consecrated is a praise of seeking the face of God and that praise asking God and he will answer you. Another two is an act of covenant. Act of covenant. First Chronicles 13, 3. David says, let us go for the ark of covenant. Because in the days of Saul, we did not inquire of the Lord do it. The ark of covenant. You are ask me, man of God, what is the ark of covenant? And that is a major area that we need to, to highlight very much. But to me, the ark of covenant, huh? Is, is, is an engagement to the God. It is a covenant that you make with God through anointing oil because how was the Ark of Covenant made? It was made using acacia wood and it was wrapped with gold and it held the cherubim which were facing each other and there was a suite of mercy up there on it. But inside the Ark of Covenant, there was a two-story tablet of the Ten Commandments. There was a jar, a norma of manna that had been put there preserved as a testimony to the children of Israel at the time. And also there, you know, there was something else. Yes, they say there was also 
the staff of Moses by the way. I do not know how it defeated the Ark of Covenant. But I want you to understand that when those things were were inside the Ark of Covenant and they consult they consult God through the Ark of Covenant, God spoke. Remember the Bible says it, and God used to speak to Moses eh, through through the winds of the cherubim where the the, the, the mother seat was set and above it were wings of the cherubims the voice of God would come from there and speak to Moses as one speaks to his friend the ark of covenant look for me I will teach you about the ark of covenant and how you can have one of your own it is not something that I will give you in the physical you go home with no but it's something you carry with your spirit that any time you consult God, God will be responding. Another thing that you use, another tool that is used in the inquiring of God is what we call a bronze altar. Second Chronicles 1 5. Second Chronicles 1 5. What does the Bible say? Second Chronicles 1 5. The Bible says, that Chronicles verse, chapter number 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, but the bronze altar that the Zalal son of Uri, the son of Ha, had made was in Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the assembly and the choir of the Lord there. And the choir of him there. Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord in the tent of meeting and offered a thousand burnt offering on it. Did you get that? And that night, uh, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked him, "What do you want?" And other than told him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and discernment, and the ability to rule the nation of Israel. Understand here, what had Solomon gone to 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 to, to Gibeon? Is it Gibeon? Yes. What had Solomon gone to do? Let us read it, verse five, and verse four. Now David then brought up the ark of God from Kiriath Jerion to the place he had prepared for it because he had built the tent of it in Jerusalem. But you can read it in a verse. I want to give you the exact name. It is Gibeon, yes. It was in Gibeon, chapter number three. And so when the whole as I went into the high place at the Gibeon, where what was at the Gibeon? The bronze altar. And he offered a thousand sacrifices there. And there he conversed with God in a dream. Do you have an altar and that matter blows the altar? It is called the altar of sacrificing. Many people are offerings. That is what when we read in Judges 20, you did not see us highlighting about the altar because I knew how we shall come to find it. You need to raise an altar to the Lord. It is called the altar of sacrifices and offerings. Many people go to church daily. They offer sacrifice and offering, but they have never raised an altar to the Lord. Where do, how, how are they offering any sacrifices received? Because they are made on an altar. Before you continue any further, raise an altar to the Lord. Because anyone who has an altar and any choirs of the Lord, the Lord responds to that person. Finally, another tool that you use in an inquiring of the Lord is called repentance. Ezekiel 14 verse 6. We shall come to learn about the traitor when we will be learning about the things eh, that he does in the calling of God. But there he says, eh, repent. Then he and inquire of the Lord. You don't inquire the Lord just that. Make a repentance if you know there are transgressions that you suspect could be in your system. Pray Jesus Christ. Those are the tools eh, that we use when we are inquiring of the Lord. And the Lord responds and responds promptly, responds correctly, responds ju justifiably. And you come out of your problems. Let me teach you now the power of inquiring of God. Why inquire of God? Why inquire of God? I started with the first Samuel. I started with the second summer and chapter number 21. Where we saw that David and the plan of the Lord about the problem that the Israel was facing. They were going through hunger, famine, and drought for three consecutive years. 
we go to inquire of the Lord because of something that is beyond human interventions, human understanding, human knowledge, and has not been revealed to anyone. That is then when we go to consult God and ask God, why this? How? Why? When? And the Lord told him, it is on the account of the, the book says, it is on account of Saul and his blood stained house. It's because he put Gibeonites to death. So there we run point number one, a hindrance to the inquiring of God. But why in the cover? Because we get highest level, highest level of second or deep most second. I want to highlight this benefits to you, and I believe God is going to bless you in a major way. Because the moment you shall know there is power in an inquiring of God, why then you wait? Go and inquire of the Lord. When you have known the tools of an inquiring of God, why can't you then get hold of them? Get hold of them. Then and inquire of the Lord. Know the truth. You are set free from that truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, refuse to die. Refuse to commit suicide. Refuse to backslide. Refuse to do that thing. Refuse to go to the witches and the sorcerers. At the end of the day, they will not help you. They will actually really put you in a bigger problem than you are in. Ask God. He knows all things. He shall reveal the matter to you. Use the proper tools. Use the proper tools. Among those tools I have taught you, read through the scriptures that I have written there. Get those tools. Try them. And tell me, you will come out with amazing truths about yourself that no one has ever even come closer in even having an idea in the name of Jesus Christ. Because even myself, there is a question I am asking God and I'm trusting God. Before the end of this night, the Lord shall reveal it to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Because all those tools, I have highlighted them to you. I have been implementing them one after the other. One after the other. Benefit number one. We get it in Genesis 25, verse 22 to 23. When Rebecca was pregnant, she said, and what is happening to me? And the Bible says, and she went to inquire of the Lord. She went to inquire of the Lord. Genesis 25. Listen to this word. The babies just stood each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to an inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Meaning, an inquiring of God, power number one, it is scans through. Scanning. <laughs> this woman, if it were today, she would have gone to a gynecologist to be scanned, to be told why is the gesturing happening in her. But her, she went to God and God scanned the problem. So, benefit number one of an inquiring of God is you get screening of your problem. God screens through your problem to give you the exact problem. He scans through. The Lord scanned and told her, oh, you, you are pregnant with the twin, twins. That's number one. That you get spiritual screening and scanning. Spiritual screening and scanning. That it gives you exact outcome. Benefit number two, power number two, is destiny description. This woman was given the details about the destiny of children. Even when you are in the choir of God, He will teach you your destiny. 
Are you lost in knowing who you are? And the toil of the Lord, and it will give you a description concerning your destiny. From the same verse, future far out. The Lord gives you warnings about the future. For the Bible says, any two peoples from within you will be separated. The Lord talks about future obstacles or future expectations or future challenges. So the Lord reveals about the future for out. You could be working with a person today, you agree in every, but when you inquire of the Lord about the future of this relationship, the Lord does the ability to reveal it to you. Rest it, catch you with a surprise, and it demoralizes you. Another thing. When you are in the choir of the Lord, the Lord reveals you the supremacy. The Lord reveals supremacy, the greatness. For the Bible says it, one will be stronger than the other. The Lord reveals your supremacy level, your greatness, or your ability. Go in the choir of the Lord, and He shall reveal to you how great you are. Or how small you are, though no one is small in the eyes of the Lord. Judges 18, verse 5 to 6. You read about the Danites when they inquired through this Levite. The Levite told them, Go in peace, your journey has God's approval. Meaning, when you inquire of God, you are paying for your silver approval of God in whatever you are undertaking. Number two, you get peaceful voyage. Peaceful voyage, voyage or mission. Many people took on voyages, but along the way, though it was the right voyage, but because they did not inquire of the Lord like Joshua, what happened to them is that uh, along the way, they did not get cementation of God's peace. So they, 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 they stabbed themselves with fears and worries. But if they could have gotten the confirmation of the Lord that uh, the journey would be peaceful, they would have nothing to worry despite what they would encounter. Peaceful voyage is received when you inquire of the Lord. Approval of God. Ooh. When the Lord has approved you, no one can disapprove you. But you get the approval of God when you inquire of God. First Samuel 10, verse 22 reveals or exposes, reveals or exposes the high doubt, the high doubt. The Lord said, whatever is in secret, whatever is in the secret uh, shall be concealed, shall be con shall be concealed, shall be exposed, shall be exposed. When they made it to anoint Saul the king, eh, they, 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 they selected the tribe of Judah by lot, and crown by crown, and the crown of Kish was selected. But when they selected the man Saul, he was not in the congregation. And they inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, He is here. He is hiding in that bush. Meaning, inquiring of the Lord reveals hiding places. You, if you ask God, He will teach you about where your destiny is hidden, where your money are hidden, where you are. You are Secret to your right is hidden. By the way, do you know if you ask God a question about what ails you or your family, the Lord can tell you the secret. He reveals the deep secret. He, they told him, they told, the Lord told them he is in that bush. And they went there and they got him and they anointed him king. Is something in your life mysterious? You don't understand what happened. You don't even know what goes on in your life. The Lord knows the hiding place. The Lord knows where the demon hides. The Lord knows the, the path which that witch uses. The, the Lord knows the hideout. 
if you will rely and depend on him, he shall reveal it to you in Jesus' name. Another thing is a final selection. When you are the choir of God, you get final selection. They did selection through Rotin. They, they selected the Benjamin, Trevor Benjamin. They selected the the crown of the crown of Kish and, and, and all that. But when the time came, the, the, the crown by crown and Matri's crown was chosen. Finally, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen. But still, he was not there. It is the Lord who always have the final say. Are you selecting the best man for you? The best woman for you? The best career for you? The best place to set your business? The best place to set your ministry? The best friend? Asking God who is the best. It is the Lord who had the final selection of Saul. Second summary two one right location identification when you inquire of the Lord the Lord has the ability have the ability to tell you the best place to go and resign the at. There are many people who are suffering in the houses in which they are in because those are not the best places that the Lord would have wanted them to be. Only when you are in the right house, the right location, your business will prosper, your family will become stable and all those things. David asked the Lord, shall I move from here? Shall I go to Hebron? The Lord said, yes, go. To which town shall I go? And the Lord told him where he should go. And that tells us that even as the minister of God, listen to what the Lord says, in the course of time, that is 2 Samuel 2 verse 1, in the course of time, David inquired of the Lord. Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah? He asked. The Lord said, go up. David asked, where shall I go? Where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up, and there he got his victory. You could be struggling with the wrong geographical site in anything about you. Remember, Moses told them, You shall seek the one place of worship in which I shall choose. There, go and worship me. You shall not worship me as we do here in the wilderness as one likes and want but when you reach there there is one praise of worship that the lord has chosen have you are you in the praise where the lord has chosen for you you are only able to get the right rotation if you inquire of the lord yes you light geographic cross site for the light environment for the light people for the light at atmosphere and all those things only the Lord who knows the right place and choir of the Lord and he will direct you another benefit or power of inquiring of God in Judges 28 verse 18 identifies the center of power identifies the center of power they ask the Lord who shall go first and the Lord said Judah. So they were able to go amongst all the tribes of Israel. The center of power was in the tribe of Judah. Meaning, if any other tribe guided them in a battle, they would fail. They would be defeated. In your family, who is the center of power? Is it your wife? Is it you? Is it one of your child? Is it your brother? Is it your sister? Is it your mother who is your father? Who is the center of your power in your life? When you are in the choir of God, God shall teach you who is the center of power. And if it is you, he shall teach you what is in you that is the center of power so that you may concentrate in it. Prayers, fasting, sacrifices god will teach you what is the center of power in your life because only when you identify the right center of power you can wage your battles proactively and with confidence another benefit of 
and the calling of God is a battle approvals. Any battle that is a that is first Samuel 23 verse 2. That David hand that they were cut no. First Samuel 23 and verse 2. David the hand that the Philistines were attacking the people of Keira. And these people of Keira had betrayed David to King Saul. But when David the hand, because they belonged to Judah, when he heard that they were being attacked, he asked the Lord, Should I attack and save Keira? And the Lord said, Attack the outpost of Philistines and save Keira. Meaning, not every battle you shall engage yourself in that the Lord shall support you in. There are battles that you shall engage in and the Lord will be there folding his hands watching you to be defeated because it doesn't have God's approval. Yes. And the calling of God approves which battle to fight and which battle to live and go your way. Not every battle that you fight, not every demon you fight, not every witch you fight, not every man of God you fight, not every person on the way you fight, not every child you fight. Ask the Lord, He will approve your battles. If He disapproves, be content. If He approves and engage in it, because there is a testimony of God inside there. First Samuel chapter number 30 and verse 8. Mission approval. Mission approval. Yes. Mission approval. When you consult God, it is God who it is God who 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 who, who approves a certain mission. That thing, uh, chapter number 30 and verse 8. The Bible says eh, and David and the point of the Lord, shall I pursue this reading party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them? He answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in rescue. If you look at this story, he was asking God about the mission of rescuing his two wives and the other people who had been, who had been taken hostage by Amalekites. But remember, David was coming from a mission that he had had not received God approval. And because it lacked God approval, he was rejected. And on coming back, he found the consequences of engaging in a mission that the God has not approved. But and that is why in this one he did not resolve to pursue. No. He chose to consult God first. Because if God disapproves, he would have left it. But the Lord said, Go and you shall save. You will be successful in serving the people. Any time you are engaging yourself in a mission and inquire of the Lord to get approval of the mission. Another thing is assurance of success. Benefit of inquiring of God is that you get what we call assurance of success. The Lord assures. You will be successful. Reason why the Bible says here, pursue them. He answered, you will certainly overtake them and succeed. And succeed in the rescue. It teaches us when we inquire of God, that is where we obtain success assurance. You go in knowing I shall win and nothing less than winning. I am going for but many of us we enter into missions to try we are not very sure if it is going to work or not but when you inquire of God you are able to get assurance of success in Jesus name another thing because you are running we are running we are not preaching we are running because it is more important to reason here and understand Yes, because these are the things that are going to launch you. In this year 2020, 2021, sorry, this year 2021, we are now in the month of May. By the time you are getting the middle of the year, June, the late next half of the year, it will be a year of success. It will be a year of excellence. It will be a year of doing things in the mindset of God because God already supports what 
he is interested with. Look at it. Winning a battle up front. Winning a battle up front. That is Second Samuel 5.19. When Samuel inquired of the Lord concerning the Philistines who were attacking him, who were attacking him, the Lord told him, look at it, let us read it. Verse 19, Second Samuel 5.19. This is what the Lord said. In verse 19, the Lord answered him. Verse 19. So David and the point of the Lord, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord answered him, go, for I will surely hand the Philistines over to you. So he defeated the enemy before even starting the battle. So when you inquire of the Lord, you win beforehand. We normally say, unless a battle is won in the spirit, it can never be won in the physical. And one of the ways of winning your battles up front is through an inquiring of God. For he tells you the state of the battle. He said, the, the, the David actually is going to do the physical part because in the spirit these people are defeated that is why you find in israel not all the battles they were fighting like in isaiah 37 you find hezekiah did not have to fight that battle look at joseph at the second chronicles chapter number 20 he did not have to fight that why they were made in their spirit so the angels of god fought it but there are those that you are allowed to engage physically, either to teach and train you or to strengthen you. But you need to know the fate of each and every battle before you engage yourself in it. So when you inquire of the Lord, you win your battles up front. Second is Psalm 523. Battle strategies that works. Battle strategies that works. When you inquire of God, God gives you strategies of battle that what he says verse 23 verse 23 so david inquired of the lord you hear david in a habit of inquiring of the lord and remember there are many people who who found themselves in problems like joshua because they did not inquire of the lord they did not inquire of the lord they entered into problems to a point the judge who had to tell God, let the sun stand still because he was defending the Gibeonites. They put him in much more troubles than even the, the, the salvation he gave them. Verse 23. So David in the point of the Lord and he answered, Do not go straight up, but the circle love them, love behind them, and attack them in front of the banner. But some trees, as soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of there, but some trees move quickly because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistines. Did you hear that? You must win your battle spiritually fast. Until you hear something in the spirit, don't launch yourself. You'll be defeated. Yes, you'll be wounded. You'll be injured fortre. In a fortre way. And what I was saying, so David did as the Lord commanded him. Yes, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gaza. Meaning, when you inquire of the Lord, the Lord gives you battle strategies that don't fail. Battle strategies that don't fail. But he was willing to ask God these questions. I know I'm running, I'm civilized. I know Rima Shakayanda Baba Babu Sherima Zuyala Baba Rakayana Mazola Babu. But you find yourself year after year, you are there speaking tongues, Riana Ganda, Rubushana, Ribaburia, Rimazinke, Ketayande, Ramazanda, Robabush. No, 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 no. Pause a bit. Go with God. And how do you go with God? By walking using His mind. By using His mind. Using his ideas for the Lord but here. He is giving David a strategy, and the Lord is saying, Only this strategy I will back when you hear things going in the spiritual realm. No, I am ahead of you. So come, let us defeat these enemies. Are you 
being overcome the hope by demons, by wicked and sources, and require of the Lord to give you a strategy. And this time you do not miss. Straight to the head, to the forehead, like in David, and they all bow down to you in Jesus' name. Look at it. First Samuel 9 6. Right direction. Right direction. When you inquire of the Lord, He gives you right direction. Why inquire of God to get the right direction? The servant of Saul told him, Let us go to the seer. He may tell us the way we should take. So there is the right direction. Come back to the crossroads and ask for the ancient ways. Walk in them and you shall find rest and you shall obtain your peace. Not every way that leads you to victory, not every way that leads you to the right direction, it's only the way that the Lord knows. That is why He led them through the wilderness to the Red Sea. They didn't know there was a way of the Lord there that would give God glory and honor. Yes, stop using your own ways. Let the inquire of the Lord of the light way. Number two from the same verse is deep revelations. Deep revelation. When you inquire of the Lord, not only will the Lord reveal to you of what you are seeking to know, but He will go beyond that and reveal something more that you have even never come across to think about. When the soul went to an inquire of the Lord from somewhere, somewhere told him, I will tell you what is in your heart. I will tell you what is in your heart. Meaning there was something that was in the heart of Saul that he had never known all those years. All those years he had never known. Only through an inquiring of God through a prophet, he came to know inside him there was kingly anointing deep revelation about self another benefit of inquiring of god because i want you to know the benefit so that you can find a reason to inquire other stop consulting mediums stop consulting spiritists stop consulting false prophets stop consulting astrologers star cases stop consulting you know consult god he knows even what witches do not know even what the satan does not know God knows and he wants you to know it so that they can take you to the next level so that they can save you and your family so that they can save all about your career save your ministry let the Lord reveal it to you in the name of Jesus Christ Jeremiah 21 verse 1 to 7 Jeremiah 21 verse 1 to 7 this is when King Zedekiah had gone had sent an entourage to any point of the Lord through prophet Jeremiah but prophet Jeremiah had this to say know the love of God when you go and inquire of the Lord you are able to know if you are in agreement with God if God is angry with you or not many people are going to pray us yes you are going to the men of God they are praying for you holding us when the Lord is angry at you and you're not aware when your relationship with God is tightened when the Lord is is breathing breathing anger against you because maybe you have a sin that you have even never repented how will you know when your relationship with God is in that or when you are a sworn enemies? It is only when you inquire of God. And you can even inquire of God directly and ask Him, Lord, is there a sin? I have not repented. And the Lord will reveal it to you. That is why David asked God about the farmer and the Lord told him there is a sin which has never been repented. It is a bread stained house of Saul. That is what I call abortions. You have ever done an abortion and you are ever seeking God, you shall, he will never respond to you. 
for where there is a when the hands are full of innocent brands those hands are not used in contacting God Isaiah 1 verse 15 the Lord turns away from your prayers even if you make many prayers he does not pay attention because of the innocent brand so you know your relationship with the core when you inquire of God another thing from the same verse is you know the extent of your faith you know the extent of your faith when you have seen God you are now able to know your faith Zedekiah was made to know the faith of Judah and Jerusalem that they indeed they will fall in the hands of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon Jeremiah 7 6 to 8 they again came to consult Jeremiah again what we learn from there is that you know the power of the enemy Jeremiah 37 verse 6 to 8 Jeremiah 37 verse 6 to 8 6 to 8 then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet this is the Lord the God of Israel says tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of me Pharaoh's army which has much out to support you will go back to its own land to Egypt then the Babylonians will return and attack this city they will capture it and burn it down did you get that meaning here the Lord was revealing to Zedekiah when he sent people to Jeremiah for Jeremiah to require of the Lord for them he told them the strength of the enemy he was telling them don't even hire reinforcement to face the king of Babylon he will defeat you This is what the Samuel will say. Do not deceive yourself thinking the Babylonians will surely leave us. They will not. Even if you were to defeat, even if you are to defeat the entire Babylonian army that is attacking you and only wounded men were left in their tents, they would come out and burn this city down. The road is revealing to the Zedekiah that the Babylonian army is not a challenge it is not equal to him and even injured men who are not trained army officers were left in the tents of babylonian army they will still burn the city down tell you what there was so much power in Babylon that is that the Kaya should not even imagine of daring to attack when you inquire of the Lord you are able to know the power your enemy has that was Jesus said before you go to the battle know the size of the army of your enemy if you can handle it you attack if you cannot you say the peace Cletus peace treaties so that you don't fall in the hands of your enemy and suffer and suffer major and much loss no time you are able to know the power and the size of your enemy if it is something you can launch yourself to deal with or not don't just attack anyone consult God to know who is attackable and who is not attackable another power of uh, and calling of god is we find it in judges chapter number 20 and verse 28 certainty and assurance certainty and assurance when they consulted god about the battle they had been defeated three times by benjamin by the time the lord said go for tomorrow for tomorrow i will hand benjamin benjamin into your hands god assured them with certainty it's like when you consult god god commits himself that it is this time it shall not fail no matter 
what when you consult God in the right way and in the right manner the Lord certainly assures you certainly assures you last for today's sermon benefit of an inquiring of God is that uh, we, we, had, we, we had highlighted that we said it's the right selection right selection in Acts chapter number 1 and in verse 24 to 26 uh, they selected Madias uh, to fill the post of Judas so when only when you inquire of the Lord you make right selection there are people who are crying because of the partners they have business partners yes marital partners ministerial partners but because you did not ask god a question you made a choice of your server only to come to realize later whatever you chose was a poisonous to you they and the quiet of the lord of the light person to fill the post apostolic post that was left vacant by judas iscariot when he went to where he belongs for betraying jesus christ how did they get the right person by an inquiring of the Lord through prayers of unison? Light selection. Only God who knows the right choice for you. Oh, pray Jesus Christ. And with that, I want to believe, my friend, you cannot dare, you cannot dare, you cannot dare to refuse to inquire of the Lord, for He is the one who knows all things. We learned in Second Summer 21 that when David inquired of the Lord, he was told the right sea. You know the right sea that has put you in the problem you are in. The, when you inquire of the Lord, he reveals to you the right exact sea that is holding you in that problem you are in and then from there by the guidance of the servant of God the Holy Spirit you are able to know how to repent that sin or how to handle what has been revealed to you but understand it reveals the right sin now let me bring you very briefly in about five minutes some of the obstacles or hindrances, some of the things that if you entertain them in your spirit, they hinder you from consulting God. They stand as a stumbling block between you and God such that God cannot respond to your inquiries. And number one is when you have shamed innocent brand. Isaiah 1 verse 15, when you have shamed innocent brand. I will come to that later. That is what we call abortions. When you have done mandas, yes, of any kind and any form, in any level, in any class, however you have done it, you have shed the blood of a human being. A hum the life is in the blood. When you have shed innocent blood, God is not inquired by people who have brand stains on them remember what he told David that you cannot build me a house because you are full of brand first kings 22 verse 6 first kings 22 verse 6 when you have a tendency to inquire of god through false prophets through pro false prophets ahab is consulting god through 450 prophets when you have the tendency to move from one pastor to another, you are, in the, you, are, you, you, you are to this pastor, this Monday, Tuesday to another pastor, Wednesday to another pastor, that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. You, you, even you do not know who is telling you the truth. When you practice divination and you consult God through divination and enchantments, false prophets, those who people I call astrologers, spiritual witches and sorcerers because we have many of them, we have very many of them today. God is not any God. Those are hindrances. You will not get a response from God. When you consult God through false prophets. You can read the second Chronicles, chapter number 18, verse 5. They were telling Ab, go, for the Lord has given you the Lord has given him victory. Go, go, go. But when Micaiah came to him, what? No, 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 no. Wait a bit. 
I saw the Lord seated on the seat of Rome. And uh, he asked, who will entice Ab to go to war? And it, in that war, face his fate of death. And the angels refused because he was an anointed one of God. But the Spirit came and he said, I will go. And the Lord asked him, how will you do it? I will enter into your prophet. I will enter into his prophet. And they shall prophesy to him a lie. And he shall believe it. And the Lord told him, you will succeed in enticing him. So when you consult God through the false prophets, you get the long information though in your eyes it seems as if it is the right information Ezekiel 14 1 to 11 when you put the idols in the heart when you put the idols in the heart and when you put stumbling wicked stumbling blocks before your face let us read. I would like us to read that verse because it is very key and very important for you to know this. Because I'll leave it to you to ask yourself what are the idols that you have in your heart and what are the wicked stumbling blocks you have put before your face. Let us read again. Ezekiel 14 from verse 1 to, to, to verse 11. Some, some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Mm -hmm. There are two things they have done. They have put idols in their heart and they have put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Verse 4. Now, the same verse. Should I read them and inquire of me at all? Should I... They will speak to them and tell them. This is what the sovereign Lord says. When any Israel sets up idols in his heart, and he puts a wicked stumbling block before his face, and then he goes to a prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him myself in keeping with his great idolatry. Great idolatry. Mm. Idolatry is a hindrance in an acquiring of God, idol worship. I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel who have all deserted me for their idols. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says, repent. Turn from your idols and renounce all your detestable practices. Verse 7. When any Israel or any alien living in Israel separates himself from me and sets up idols in his heart, and he puts a weakened stumbling block before his face. And then he goes to a prophet to inquire of me. I, the Lord, will answer him myself. I will set my face against that man. And make him an example. And by what? I will cut him off from my people. Then you know that I am the Lord. This does not this answer us why we pray and instead of getting blessings, we get the curses. Instead of things changing, they become worse because of this. We are seeking God with the set idols in our heart and with this, we can be stumbling blocks before our face. And then we go to any code. The Lord does it. Such a person, me, myself, God, I will answer that person. And when I answer that person, I will make him an example and by and a by word. Dangerous. Dangerous. First Samuel 14. First Samuel 14. Then we need it quickly. Because our time is up. I have about three minutes. First Samuel 14. Let me teach you something here. I want you to understand. There are things that we pray around with. And they hinder and limit us in any calling of God. Yes. And you know when God doesn't respond to you, it means there is no heavenly intervention. There is no divine nature participation. You cannot experience the supernaturality. No. You will only try to attain your goals through flesh in the state of grace. It is it is not by what it is by grace but when you are experiencing this you attain your goals through works but not by grace 14 
14, 14. First Samuel 14, verse 36. Let us read it very quickly. Verse 36, verse 36. What does the Bible say? Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and plunder them till dawn, and let us not leave one of them alive. Do whatever seems best to you, they replied. But the priest, I told you, the priest must be used in any calling of God. But the priest said, Let us any call of God here. Let us ask, let us any call of God here. So Saul asked God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you give them into Israel's hands? But the God, but the God did not, did not answer him that day. Saul so, therefore said, Come here, all of you who are leaders of money, and let us find out what is sin has been committed today. Meaning, Saul so directly knew the only reason why God cannot be inquired of by one who has anointed is if only you have sinned and what was the sin committed it's a sin called breaking sin of breaking a vow sin of breaking a vow you don't break a vow and then you require god no so had raised an oath that no one is going to taste any of their things until he has defeated the Philistines and he plundered them. But his son Jonathan, he was not there, he was in the camp of the Philistines, defeating them by his armor bearer, they did not hear of the oath. And when he was coming back, he, he, he found some wild honey somewhere and he dipped his stick into that honey cup and he some honey and he tasted it and his eyes grew so Jonathan broke the oath that his father had made the whole army take that breaking of the oath made, made God not be inquirable by Saul when you break your vows to God God is not amused with your inquiries. He does not respond. That is why you find the saying, He comes, He in the kind of the Lord, in chapter number that one, that there, chapter number that one, He in the kind of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him through dreams, through urim, and through prophets. Who to the sin of Saul? Practicing divination. But here we run. Whatever they had done, they had broken the oath of fasting. It was a vow of fasting. No one will eat anything until evening. A vow of fasting had been broken. And then the Lord was consulted. The Lord was inquired. He did not answer. So the times that God doesn't answer. In Joshua chapter number 7, they broke the covenant of God and they were defeated by the men of Ai and they went to an choir of the Lord and the Lord refused to be an choir. He said, until you remove that which is dedicated to destruction from among your things, a can had destroyed. When you break a covenant with God, God is not consultable. Finally, Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel 20, about things that if you have them, sort them out before you consult God. Ezekiel 20 and verse 30, and that one. Ezekiel 20 and verse 30, and that one. Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says, will you defile yourselves the way your fathers did and last rusting and last after their viral images when you offer your gifts the sacrifice of your sons the sacrifice of your sons in the fire so now we know people who do abortion they do it to who they do it to the god of fire who is the god god of fire bar uh -huh. 
we shall come to learn that it is a deep sin, whatever. You continue to defile yourself with all your idols to this day. Listen, listen. Am I to let you inquire of me? Am I to let you inquire of me? O house of Israel, as surely as I live, the Creator, the Sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire of me. I will not let you any call of me. He has given like three reasons why he will not let you any call of him. Number one is when you defile yourself. When you are defiled. Last time I thought about the things that defile a person. I will repeat that topic about the things that defile a person. But when you are defiled. But here he has given the second of this defilement. He says when you defile through or by it, Lasting vile images. Lasting vile images. That is what today we call a pornographic site. You who is have a tendency of visiting pornographic sites of watching those vile images. When you watch during this time. They were watching viral images of carved images. They were carved images that were set in the streets and in the temples of Baal, uh, Morek and those uh, Ashtoleti, uh, Dagon, Nimrod, those idols, those gods of those times. They were images that were carved, that were carved. And uh, sometimes I see them in our nation. Yes, if you, walk, if you walk along the streets uh, of our set, uh, you will find those kind of images. When they rust, the word is lasting, lasting, mm, rusting. The Lord is saying that the person is defiled. And when the person goes to any call of the Lord, the Lord refuses to be any call of that person. And today, these lasting viral images, I, I reckon it to pornographic sites. That is what you are finding today. We are having a generation that is going haywire in exposing Jezebel windows. Jezebel windows. The windows that are in a woman that 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 that, that factionalize the spirit of rusting. Mm, there are things that are called Jezebel windows. When I'll be teaching about the, the, the sin of undertone, I will teach you those windows, the windows of Jezebel. You are finding today women who are wearing the way they want, not all of them, but there is a group of them that the devil has highlighted to be the centers of rust by telling them to be a viral image such that the way you are wearing, you cannot appear the way you are before you are mother, before you are mother, before seeing authority. And that is what we are seeing them even in our televisions. Viral images. Go to your television, switch any channel, watch any music. You will find those viral images there. Billboards, advertisement, viral images are there. Those sites I've just highlighted. Viral images are there. Train your eyes not to rust. For Jesus said, whoever rusts on a woman has committed adultery with her in the heart, therefore is defiled in the spirit and in the heart. Finally, he said, when you sacrifice your sons to the fire, when you sacrifice your sons to the fire, you cannot inquire God. Believe that. You ask me, man of God, I have never offered a sacrifice, my child. No, but the people today are offering their children to the god of fire called Baal. These gods of Amorite, Moabite, and Ammonite, and Canaanite gods, they are the ones that were eating sacrifices of children. Like in Baal. Like in Morek. Like in Chemosh. They, they were receiving sacrifices of children. How do we do it today? Today we do it through abortions. Any form of abortion. In the Bible, the Bible talks about miscarriages. But the abortion is not in the Bible. Terminating someone's life is aborting a life. When you offer those children, 
Because when you do that, you have killed a child, you have done an abortion. Either you as a man by giving money, or as a lady by yourself, is one who is a carrier. Where does that child go to? Have you ever asked yourself? That is a child sacrifice to the fire. The Lord has said, those are things when you practice them, you forbid yourself, and you hinder yourself from any caring of God. I believe that the Lord has enlightened you. I believe the Lord will start now working with you in the journey of an inquiry of the Lord. This topic has taught it long. One hour and 40 minutes. I was not in a hurry because I wanted us to get these things and get them critically so that you may stop struggling in your walk of faith with God. Now, get the tools of inquiring of God then repent of the things that are an obstacle in inquiring of the God then inquire of God and enjoy all the benefits of when God is inquired of by a believer by an Israelite you and me and may God now give you that secret may God give me that second may the Lord make me know and reveal to me the mystery in the name of Jesus Christ I release the same to you may the Lord make you know the mystery around you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit I leave you under the umbrella of amazing grace of Jesus Christ my names are Apostle Joel Hapami I invite you to support me using my lines which are out there. Send your time, send your offering, send your support. Send your free will offering, send your gifts of any kind to that number that is written there, to that account number. You want prayer, you want counseling, you want direction, you want to make an inquiry, call that number which is there and we shall help each other and we shall walk together. May God bless you, may the Lord keep you, May the Lord protect you. May the Lord preserve and sustain you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you. Amen, amen, amen.